this is what would normally be done. And you know, back in the day, we would fill in a couple of lines, give a little pop to the cheek or something. This is what's being done now. We're all over the zones. We're not even in zones anymore. We're ubiquitous across the face. And that's, of course, one of Ken's beautiful results two months after a single treatment. But we're not limited to the skin anymore. We're now firing the needle under the skin. How do I know I'm not in a vessel? How do I know I'm not going to cause a problem? To me, it's knowledge of injection anatomy. And that's all about one word. And that word is depth. And that's all I want to hear from you guys today. What depth are you at? What depth are you at? D, why? Because anatomy means, really means anat and temni means I cut. But what we're talking about over here with anatomy is what are you holding in your hand at that time? If I'm holding an ultrasound wand, then it's radiological anatomy. If I'm holding a scalpel, it's surgical anatomy. But I'm holding a syringe with a needle at the tip. So what's the anatomy there? It's injection anatomy. And what am I worried about? Where is what? The syringe? No. Where is the tip of the needle? Because where the tip is is where the product is coming out. And if it's in the wrong place, that's when I'm going to get into trouble. And I got to tell you something. You can go back and study all the surgical anatomy that you want. You can study it from today till tomorrow with all these textbooks. Anatomy textbooks just give you an average depiction of what's out there. This is anatomy textbook. That's actually the case after you dissolve away everything except the veins of the face in this particular cadaver. There's the anatomy variations, OK? It's an average depiction. And there's so many variations and classifications. What if, in this situation, upper left is what the patient had, but I think I'm injecting lower right, and I'm injecting into the tear trough? I can't tell which variation my patient has. So injection anatomy is the study of regional anatomy as it relates to surface landmarks. You do not have the luxury of doing x-rays and putting dye in everybody's face to see where the vessels are. So what you have to do is you have to look at the topography of the face and say, when I'm putting my needle in or cannula in over here, what am I going, where am I going? How deep do I have to go? What lies under the skin there, okay? You think you can avoid a face vessel? Impossible. Are you good enough to be able to find a little gap? No. Every single time you put a needle in a face, you're violating a blood vessel. Guaranteed. The fact that blood doesn't come up to the surface of the skin does not necessarily mean that you haven't punctured something. It just isn't getting up there. It might be too deep. It might have sealed off. But you're violating vessels every time you stick a needle in the face. What you don't want is this. You don't want the tip of the needle to be in a major vessel. Why is that? Because the second that you press on the plunger, the second that you start to exert pressure, the pressure at the tip of the needle exceeds the arterial blood pressure. Systolic. You're talking what, 120, 140, maybe the patient's anxious, 160, 180. The second that you start to press on the plunger, the product now does not care which way the blood is flowing. It only follows one principle, and that's Poisson's law. And Poisson's law says that the resistance to flow is inversely proportionate to the fourth power, the fourth power of the radius. A small little increment in a change of the radius exerts a huge pressure against flow. So which way is the product going to flow? If I'm going to scream fire over here, which I'm not doing, are you going to try to crawl out through a crack under the door, or are you going to head to the biggest opening possible? You go for where it's the biggest opening. The product doesn't care which way the blood's flowing. It wants to go down the largest chamber. Blow into a straw, there's a lot of resistance. Blow into a hose, it's easy. So where is the vessel biggest? Where it's coming from or where it's going? Proximal. So when you inject, the product flows very often retrograde, backwards. Then you release your finger off this plunger, and the blood carries it distally. You got it? And so what ends up happening is we see clogged vessels. Guys, we've reviewed all the cases that have been reported of skin necrosis, of blindness, in every single 
case, without exception, there is product inside the vessel. In the face, you do not have compartments like you do in the peripheral limbs. You can cause a compartment syndrome in a peripheral limb because of the fact that there's no room for expansion. But you would have to inject five, six, seven cc's into one specific area to cause compression of an artery or a vein in the face. And there's so much collateralization that if you grab the tree by the trunk, there's very little consequence. My plastic surgery and dermatology colleagues over here who do cancer excisions on the face can tell you I've tied off the angular artery a thousand times and the face doesn't turn white on me because there's friends that come and help. But once the product starts to get into the peripheral circulation, a little more distally is what I meant, once it starts to go down into the branches of the tree, there is no help. And those little dermatomes of skin are now supplied by a single little arterial. And that's when you get into trouble. But if when you put the needle in, you understand that the vessels are more superficial and at worst you're going to go through a vessel and end up on the bone or in the tissue beneath it, when you put the product in, there should be no consequence. If you do cause some temporary constriction with a little bit of massage, it disappears.